Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Mass 5th Grade, Module 13, Lesson 2. I'm going to start off by going over the I Can Objective. It says, I can read, write, and represent decimals to the thousands. The learning objective is to read and write decimals to the thousands. Prior learning is that students recognize that in a whole number, a digit in one place represents 10 times what it represents in the place to its right. Students read and wrote multi-digit whole numbers using base 10 numerals, number names, and expanded form. So moving into the lesson, we're on page 323. We see a problem that says a digital caliber can measure the lengths of objects to the nearest thousandth inch. And it says 2.583 inches. The question says, how would you read the measurement shown? Describe the place value of each digit. So most people would just say 2.583. The proper way to say this is 2 and. That decimal place says and. Then you would read the whole three-digit number as a whole. So it would be 583. And then you would say the place value that it ends in. That 3 is in the thousandths place. So we would say it 2 and 583 thousandths. So when we want to write it down in word form, we're going to write exactly what I just said. So we're going to write 2, and that decimal place says and, then we're going to write our whole three-digit number, 583. Five hundred eighty-three. And then we want to end it with the place value that we ended on, which was in the thousandths. Not, remember that has a THS on it. Then the second part of the question says, describe the place value of each digit. So I'm just going to take it one number at a time, and I'm going to say what place value it's in. So I have my 2, I have a 5, I have an 8, and I have a 3. That 2, because it's on the left side of the decimal place, is in my 1s. The 5 is on the other side of the decimal place. That's in my 10s. Then the 8 right next door would be the 100s. 100s. And 3 would be in the 1000s. All right. Let's go ahead and flip the page. We have a problem, number one, that says the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt originally stood 146 and 609 thousandths meters tall. You do want to practice saying it correctly. So the bold says write the height of the pyramid in the place value chart. Then represent the height using words. So go ahead and fill in that chart using numbers. Underneath it, write it in word form. Then in A, it says do the two fit, do the two digits that are the same in 146 and 609 thousandths have the same place value. So which numbers are the same? Do they have the same place value? B, since the digit in the hundredths place is zero, can you write the decimal as... 146 and 69 hundredths. And the way I said it should give you a hint. And then for C, to write 146 and 609 thousandths in expanded form, find the unknown numbers. Write the expanded form of 146 and 609 thousandths. So underneath, they give you a hint, and you're just filling in those little gray squares with the place value. So it says one times, what's the place value of one? Fill in the gray with that square. Four times, what place value is the four in? Fill in that gray square, and so on and so on. And you're going to rewrite it as a full expanded form sentence underneath. All right, go ahead and try your best on this problem. We'll come back and solve them together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great. Let's go ahead and go over these. So in my blue chart at the very top, I'm just going to fill it in one number at a time. So I know that I see my decimal point right in the middle. Right after my decimal point is the 609. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. 
And then in front of my decimal, I have one, four, six. So luckily there's no extra boxes or charts to fill in. It's just one number, exactly how it shows. Now we wanna write it in word form. So we wanna write 146, no ands until we get to the decimal. So 146, now that we hit the decimal, we say and, and then the three digits together is 609. Because there's a zero, just go from the 600 to the nine. Six hundred nine, and then we want to make sure we get that place value that it ends on, and you can see here that it ends in the thousands place. All right, and then going down to A, it says do the two digits that are the same in 146 and 609 thousandths. That's the two sixes that they're talking about. Do they have the same place value? Well, no, the first six is in the ones and the second six is in the tenths. So no, of course they don't have the same place value. So we would put no because we have six ones and six tenths. So they are different. And then for B, so since the digit in the hundredths place is a zero, can you write it without the zero? Well, we would also say no to this one because then the nine would be in the hundredths place. So the way it's supposed to be is the nine is in the thousands, right? So it's nine out of a thousand. That's the correct way to do it. In this new way, if you skip the zero, it moves over a place value, so it's changing the value of the number to nine over, and that's in the hundreds. So that's not gonna work. We wanna make sure that every single number is shown, every single place value is shown, even if it has a zero in it. And that applies when we go to the, um, the next one and see, we still need to put part of the expanded form for the zero. We can't just skip over it. So for the one, it says one times what? What place value is the one in? Well, up above, we know it's in the hundreds from the blue chart. So I'm gonna write one times 100, then I'm gonna add and go to the next number. My four is in my tens place value, so I write a 10. Then add to the next number. My six is in the ones, so then I just multiply it by one. Add it to the next place value. Now I'm in the point six. So I'm doing six times, and there's two different ways you can do this. You can write one tenth as a fraction, or you can write tenth of it as a decimal, and I'll show you both. The way I like to do it is as a fraction, just because that more easily in my brain says tenth. So that looks like this. If you wanted to write it as a decimal, it would just be point one. Then adding to the next place value, we have a zero, and remember we can't skip this, so it's zero times by, this is the hundredths. As you write it as a decimal, it'd be point zero one, right? Just removing it one place away from the decimal. And our last number as the nine would be in the thousandths. And that would be point zero zero one. All right, go ahead and use this to solve the rest of your problems, and I'll see you back here for Module 13, Lesson 3.